this is India. We are not far from where missiologists call the graveyard of missions. I'm in Bihar state, home to more than 100 million people. Poverty and malnutrition are rampant. The average lifespan is all but 53 years. Demonic activity is widespread, and the majority of these people have never heard the gospel. Dear friends who love Christ and who love the Great Commission, greetings in Jesus' precious name. A few weeks ago, a middle-aged man and his two daughters came to our uh, hospital in Bihar, northern India. The elder of the two girls was seeking employment after studying three years nursing, and the younger one had finished a four-year program in medical lab technology, making her qualified to run any biotechnology lab in India. It was rather unusual for children from a rural community that they represented a night's journey from where we stayed to have such impressive qualifications. So I wanted to know a little bit more about them, and I asked the older girl, what is your name? She said, Neelam, a very Bihari name. I turned to the younger one and asked her, my child, what is your name? And she said her name was Vigila. I said, that doesn't sound Bihari. It must be from a different part of India. And I asked her, my child, where did you get this name from? Again, with a twinkle in her eye, she said, my parents have told me about a, a doctor who came to our village many years ago and served us. In memory of Dr. Vigila, my parents gave me this name. I held my breath as the father narrated the story of the life of Dr. Vigila and her husband, Dr. Isaac, as they served nearly two decades ago among the Malto people. I knew of the Malto people they were a particularly vulnerable tribal group, about 254,000 of them. But that was not all. Reaching out to the Malto people was very difficult. Literacy rates were very poor. Maternal and infant mortality rates were astronomically high. And there was no electricity and no running water. It was at this time, two decades ago, that a missionary enterprise in southern part of India decided to send teams to the Malto people in the northern part of India. As these teams felt specially called to work among the most vulnerable, the most far-reaching places, they went, but they were soon to, to face an unexpected challenge, and that challenge was cerebral malaria. Within weeks of reaching the Malto area, a young man who had gone there died after a week of fever. Following this, a father and a son also went with the same missionary enterprise to serve the Malto people. A few weeks later, unfortunately, both father and son had died. The son of the missionary enterprise that actually was doing this work among the Malto people, also said, I've just finished my master's in social work. I'm also going. Incidentally, his name was Jim Elliott. And he went to the Malto people. And within a few weeks, unfortunately, he also died. So a pail of gloom descended upon this village as the poor and innocent villagers were distraught that people who came to serve them had suddenly died. And they were extremely sad. Neelam and Vigila 
were in my office and their father looked at me and said, I remember this, I was just a young boy when this happened and right in my own village, the graves of the father and son are there. As life continued, villagers were intrigued to see in the far distance the silhouette of a man walking the hills. They could not see his face. They had never seen him before, but there he was walking the hills. It wasn't one person who saw that. It was a second, a third, and dozens more started to see this man in the hills walking during this time of grief and suffering. They asked each other who this man was, but nobody could give them an answer. His figure would appear on and off, and many more people would see him in a distance. Fast forward a few months after that, this missionary enterprise took the Jesus film there. As they hauled up their diesel generators, and as they played the reels of the Jesus film, a couple of hundred people had gathered to see this. And as the movie started, people started to talk amongst themselves. They started to look at the man in the movie. And they said, this is the man who walked the hills. Suddenly there was commotion in the crowd and more and more people were standing up and they were saying, this is the man who a few months later walked the hills in our area. In the providence of God, a few people, and then dozens, and then hundreds, and then thousands of people came to faith in the message of the man on the middle cross. The young girl, Vigila, looked at me now, and she said with a twinkle in her eye again, in my village and in that entire area that we are, where Vigila and her husband Isaac work, every village now has a church. As Neelam and Vigila took, stood in my office with their father, Gol Parihar, I was wondering whether the tears were tears of joy or tears of sadness, as I recalled the sacrifices of the pioneer missionaries. I knew Dr. Vigila and her husband, Dr. Isaac, one of the men who died there, his own brother worked with us in Bihar, translating scriptures. And whether it was tears of joy or tears of sorrow, I do not know. But the truth of the gospel came so much closer to me that it is often tears and sorrow that accompanies our work on the mission field. And yet, there is fruit that comes that we are unaware of generations after us. The gospel provides a lift for the people and people who are in despair, in the shadow of death, in disease, they have an opportunity to come into eternal life and have hope in the Messiah. Medical services came to the people, schools were established, the gospel was proclaimed and demonstrated and God's shalom came to the people there. As a result, transformation came among the Malto people, empowerment, and a new life began for the people 10 to 15 years ago. A mentor friend of mine, Henry Wong, used to say that there is an alignment of several factors that produces an amazing array of God's work. In the scriptures, the term is called in the fullness of time, it happened. And so, in the fullness of time, God can take our lives, God can use it, and he can deploy us and send us to the ends of the earth. God's purposes and God's people together produce results that are amazing and wonderful. If you believe that, can you say hallelujah? hallelujah. Let's turn our attention to Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 to 11. It says here, in your relationships with one another, 
have the same mindset as Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Rather, he made himself of nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus is Christ to the glory of God the Father. Verse seven says he made himself nothing, or he literally emptied himself. The King James Version says, he made himself of no reputation. Well, it says that in coming to the world, Christ chose not to arrive in a fashion that would cause people to say that there is God's incarnate son. Rather, the Christ child sign is not a chariot, but a manger. It is not a scepter, but a stable. When Augustine was asked, what are the three cardinal principles of the Christian life? He said, number one, humility. Number two, humility. Number three, humility. As professionals in the healthcare field, we have tremendous opportunities to influence the people who are around us. We have tremendous opportunities to decide where we go and what is the nature of our work. If we are convinced of the love of God for us and his sacrificial death for us, that love will spur us to give our lives also in sacrificial service back to him. No matter what we do, it is nothing compared to the sacrifice of Jesus on the, Christ, on the cross for us. David Livingston was one of the men who went to Africa and rewrote the history of medical missions in Africa. Ida Scudder was an American who came to our country of India and established the famous Christian medical college and hospital in southern India. Another Scottish doctor came to northwest India and established the Christian medical school where I went to do my medical studies. Decades have passed. Generations later, hundreds and hundreds of people are walking in their footprints because of the sacrifice and dedication of people who laid down their life looking at the love of God on the cross of Calvary. The fruit of the labor of these men and women outlived them in giving and emptying of themselves they were laying the path on which hundreds more people and a sick population and thousands of people would know eternal life and come into God's shalom. A scripture portion that will strengthen us is found in Matthew 25 and verse 39. The righteous will answer him saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and give you to eat? When did we see you thirsty and give you to drink? When did we see you a stranger and take you in? When did we see you naked and clothe you? When did we see you sick and prison and visit you? And the Lord would say unto them, Assuredly I say unto you, in the little that you've done, to the little of these, the least of my brethren, you have done it for me. My dear friends, in conclusion, I started with an incredible account of what God did in a small village in the interior part of Bihar. Medical missions 
nursing played a crucial part in the transformation story of the Malto people. Today, there are literally thousands of people who have found faith in Christ and hundreds of churches. The dedication of a husband-wife doctor, the missionary enterprise who persisted despite the death of their own, the Jesus film, the scriptures becoming available to the people, education opportunities, empowerment, all of these created a lift and transformation for the people. What was known as the graveyard of missions started to turn into a vineyard for the Lord. At this conference, I pray that we would find our place on the beautiful map of God's mission field. Perhaps it is being a prayer partner. Perhaps it is going as a short-term worker. Perhaps it is being a long-term worker or a supporter, whatever it is. Let us not only be inspired, but let us find our place and give our lives for the master who gave everything for us. I pray as I close that our lives would not be characterized by the chariot, but by the manger. Our lives would not be characterized by the scepter, but by the stable. God bless you. Thank you very much.